What this, lake is this? Sand Cooper. 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 This is the upper lake. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at this thing right here. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could catch and that's your catfish now? Spring of the year. When we fished that thing, I fished it twice. What are you talking about? This on the other side of the channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That long, long, long finger bar. that comes yeah. out there. It's pretty shallow, it's eight. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a brake line going in it, obviously, you know, with that channel right yeah. there. I mean, it, it looks good, but, I mean, we could go, well, I came on up in here when I was fishing this down here. I came on up in here and was fishing, mm -hmm. fishing these little brake lines mm -hmm. in here, not so close to the channel, mm -hmm. like maybe where this cut goes back in here. And we catch, we catch the catfish in here, but never got bit out here. Is there a lot of current in there? Well, you got a couple of cuts, you know, along here, too. Did you ever try those? Well, we actually come out of Mill Creek. Oh, you come out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was thinking maybe if the water was too fast in there or something like that. Oh, but you know, but it's not. There's more current. She said, promise is promise. That's where you get starting to and well, now, I've never been past here. I I've never, yeah. I've never looked at any of that. <laughs> now this is where we was gonna put the boat in. Right? You know, I say yeah. it's shallow, it's shallow, shallow it's in it's there, but I just couldn't figure. I mean, there's. It this looks is basically like it be, yeah, It looks like it should be a nice, easy spot to find, and might be a nice spot to catch it. You know. Maybe we was at the wrong time. It's That's hard to say. say. It's like anything else, you gotta spend time. You know, it's, it's hard to say. Now where we where we fish at down there is all in here. Uh, you better fish more. A little bit around here in Rock Pond area and stuff. Mm -hmm. But mainly up and down the rip rap here. What's and the skin around here? Yeah. Good over here real good. Yeah. That, see that little hump right there? Mm-hmm. You know, we catch a lot of a lot of fish on, on that thing. What's the skill on that man? That's about three miles. Five miles. Five miles? Mm. Well, five miles of rip <laughs> You know those, I believe those crappy spawn on those rocks. Oh, sure. Those open spots in those rocks, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Do they, do they get in there and, and fan out in between them or up uh, on top of them? In between them. In between them. Like, all the rocks in the rip rap, when you start getting down a little bit, like three, four, five feet deep, you got little holes in between, little pockets in between these rocks, and they, a little cave. They can actually go in there and go behind one rock, like a little tunnel. Oh, sure. They're out of the current that way. Uh, there's no predator fish that can really get at them that way, and sure, they're spawning right in there. Well, I know the spring of the year, you can come down here, and if you just hit it on the right, right weekend, you, you, you They're all over the place. Catfish and, and the mm -hmm. crappy both, and you just, you go in sections of it there that you, I mean, trolling for the catfish, you'll catch the, the crappie. Crappie, yeah. 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 <laughs> Give him a mouthful. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, they're pretty good crappie. They will pound. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty big. Yeah, size big, fish. big ones. I'm scared of the dog. You're not the one getting the This right here where these, these yeah, two where channels yeah. come together, there's a, there's a, a big tree in between those two. And we, it looks like a totem pole with one arm, yeah. like that. We call it a totem pole. Yeah. But that's a, that's that's a good hot spot along there because they got a way to get there. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, me and my son was down there last the, last, last year, year four last. When Richard and John were down there, year four last. And he was seven then. <laughs> And uh, I would put the rod in the rod hole for him. And then I would let mine out on this side of the boat. You know? And we got right along here where this uh, <coughs> little river channel comes in here. And uh, in between those two, about a two, three hundred yard stretch there. And I was running a 200 on the inside. And I was running a 100 on the outside. 
It's pretty steep for it to drop off. I'd let his out, put it in a rod holder. Just easing up through there, and I start letting mine out. For about 30 minutes, I couldn't get mine out. <laughs> oh, yeah. So then I take it out of the rod holder because yeah. I was scared to let him him grab the rod and try to get it out of the rod holder. So I'd take, I'd reel mine back in right quick and I'd take it out of the rod holder and I'd hand it to him and then I'd sit there and just watch it. You know? <laughs> oh, and he'd have a ball. And uh, Jonathan come come up on us out there and we'd, we'd done um, in 30 minutes. I got a 120 quarter. <laughs> Double lid. I tore them up and then filled it up and filled my life with it. <laughs> and, and I told Jonathan, I said, man, they're here. They're right here between that stump right yonder and this totem pole right here. I said, put you on the 200 on the inside and 100 on the outside. And they stayed there that day. They caught 180 pounds of catfish that, that one day. Me, me, and my, me and Hunter, we went on the left. And we came over here and, and monkeyed around on these little short bars and stuff over here and still caught them. You see these, Jay? 16 pounds. Yeah. 16 fish weighed 145 pounds? Yeah, catfish. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Break your arm. Well, uh, Hunter, uh, this past year, we were down there in March just kind of monkeying around, you know. We went down there and caught the fish. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to go over to the river. I'm going to go over and troll that river. I heard that all morning after lunch went over there. I said, okay, we'll go. It's still cold, still chilly outside, really. We went over and started trolling the river. The 800 and worked our way down, you know, the 800. I think it was 800. 700, 800. His rod on the ends, because he's got a fish in there next to him, rock. His is going to be on the inside, regardless of which way we're going. His is going to be in there next to the rock. So I seen his rod pull back and it come up, and I said, well, he hit a tree, you know, yeah, fishing line or something. And he just pulled back. I said, well, he, he got caught in some fishing line and it got to the end, you know, and he pulled it back. The rod Drag going out, so I stopped the boat, reeled mine in, and then grabbed his. And I said, We hung up, and I'd done it like that one time. And went, oh, you got a good one. So I come around on my head, and I handed it to him, because he was standing right, right there where you were. And I handed it to him. And he's sitting there, and he had to put the buzz rod right there. Yeah. And he started turning that thing, and he's going. Opposite direction. I said, oh, you got your paper here. You know. So I was sitting there and I was pumping him up, you know, and he was going old Rob and bent down. And he got it up there one time when it flashed. Kind of flashed as much as a catfish can, you know. And I, I, I see it and I said, I fish. Right back to the bottom. He said, Daddy, what do I do now? I said, you got to start over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it, right there. Let's see. There you go, Chase. 30 pound Look flathead, eight year old. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at him Look grinning. At Look at him grinning. <laughs> he's, he's a heavy one, isn't he? Yeah, his, his wrist must have been sore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. What he does on that fish roll, two fins right here, and the dorsal fin, that line up behind it, he'll cut that nose right into it. And he's moving in five years. We lost a lot of food before we learned that out. <laughs> <laughs> it was really it'll, it'll a little take a lot of abrasion on the rocks and stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, get, you get a lot of lines out there. We tried that, that braided line, and boy, it wouldn't stand up at all. Oh, no. Kill That's cut right through there. That's yeah. Kill yeah. yeah. Laura, you big old long, you bump a rock one time. And then you line it. <laughs> I had a guy who were up and looked at the stats, and I said, that stuff is garbage. Then he showed me how to give him a bottle of glue. Tied it on the knot and put the glue on it. I said, what's wrong with you guys? I said, don't you have any more sense than that? I said, to be using that stuff? You know, I It's just, something new, Terry. Well, that's it's what new. it is. It's got to be better. That's what it is. I was talking to the fellows about this spider wire now, okay? I've got a friend that is a master at fixing reels. And they make these new reels, the spider wire reels. They're all over 100 bucks. 
Well, there's a little casting wheel made by Mitchell called it. It's quite a wire reel. He, he, he fixed over 1,200 of them. 1,200 of those wheels. Where the level wine's been messed up and the anti reverse post is ripped out. And they're a piece of junk and they sell catalog price now. Not what you could get in Walmart or something. But catalog price is 180 something dollars. You'll probably buy it at Walmart for 100 or whatever, you know. But a reel like that, he's fixed over 1,200 of them. So he's put a couple together, one for him and one for me. He's going to mail it to me, and we're going to put it to use and see if it was just abuse or what. But I told him, I said, I've got the acid test for it. Start cranking at 100 and 700 in on that thing, digging on the bar. You'll find out what kind of reel you got in your hand. You know, and if it doesn't last, but that reel probably is a, is a maybe a, going by other prices, $60 reel. Mm -hmm. But because it's got the name Spider Wire on it, they sold us monofilament line that was clear, then they made it blue, then they made it yellow, then they made it green. They said, we got to come up with something different. Now they come up with all this, this steel line. You know, and this is supposed to be the answer. And I had a good friend of mine who's a mustard fisherman, and he had just bought a brand new rod. It was a graphite rod, and it was a St. Croix, one of the best musky rods you can buy, $100 rod, something like that. And he's casting with, with either Kevlar or Fireline or some, something like that. And we had made a trolling pass past him, and we heard something that sounded like a rifle shot. And he had hit the weeds and yanked hard on the musky plug, a big suet, and the rod broke right in half. <laughs> Now that line broke the rock, okay? And another thing about that spider wire on Kevlar, it, that 110 pound test or whatever it is, you know, that they claim, on a straight pull, that's true, that's true. You could pull a truck with that damn stuff. But, just get a weed or some trash out of it. Yank it at you, throw it back and straighten it out. Let that loop get in it, and it'll snap like string. Really. It can't take that shock, you know, that loop where it isn't a straight pull, like you do with the mobile all the time. You throw it back and rip it, throw it back and rip it, or you throw that back and get that loop in there, put a pretty heavy load on, like a 100 or 700, and straighten it out and that stuff will snap just like that. That's it. That's it. They made it, they sold it, and uh, you know, the guys use it and they can cast with it. They claim they can cast better with it, but realistically, the monofilament has been good for 40 years, 50 years. What, why should we change? There's no reason. When everybody's got that, it'll be something else. Something else, yeah. You have to keep selling. And when they make that kind of reel with a wire, a line, what I like about it, they make a reel with the name on it to go with it. Yeah. And it's going to cost three times more than what it's yeah, worth. Spider, what is yeah. spider cast system? Yeah, they've got spinning <laughs> reels and casting reels. And they even got a push button. I think they got a push button. Spider wire, and it's loaded with the spider wire. So they've got the spin cast reel, the open face spin reel, and they got the casting reel. Oh, they got you coming and going. They're never going to run out of gimmicks. They, they'll just never run out of it. They, because, got, uh, they got some people coming. Yeah, well, they're, they're not going to get us, Nancy. I mean, we're, we're probably the worst people in the world for them. You know, we do the same old stuff all the time. But um, I, I watch them, and uh, they fish the same way all the time. And once in a while, they pop a pretty good fish. And they, they, they make a big thing out of fishing way back in all these creeks and stuff like that. Sure, there's some bass back in there that never ever uh, uh, come out of there and they don't know anything about the open lake and they never used to be bothered but do you know what kind of pressure them fish are getting back in there now <laughs> they've seen so many spinner baits they must be dizzy from them <laughs> the lake above uh, up in, around durham is uh, sharon harris we were talking about it on the way up here and there's an article in there and, and the guy writing the article now he says they were talking about this catch that a man and his wife had made up there doing a tournament. I can't remember what they talked Bill, I can remember. But anyway, he. Yeah, 75 pounds. 10 fish, what, 70, almost 73 pounds. Yeah, that's a good part. Yeah, good. But he went on to say in an article that this guy told him the reason they caught those fish was because 
Joe Blow back in the country made him this spinner bait mm -hmm. that the fish hadn't seen before. <laughs> And, and the fish hadn't seen it, so that's the reason he yeah, caught the fish. Certainly. So he put all of his all of his success back into that lure, which is exactly backwards. He he just so happily looked up on a movement of fish, right? Yeah. Me and you both know that. That's what he did. Yeah. <laughs> Had nothing to do with the lure. He made a slow roll that spinner bait on a brake line or something, or whatever he did, he got into a Well, it, you know, it may have been that one that the guy made was and a half an ounce heavier than what he's well, used to fish. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and it's usually one to the bottom. And this, this guy that lives in North Carolina, in Denver, North Carolina. Yeah, Hank Park. Hank Park. Him, they all <laughs> have your spinner bait that you buy off the shelf, but they're all doing something different with it. Mixing a willow blade with an Indiana or, or changing the willow blades. And, and uh, what makes the difference is the water color or the, the or this or that, you know. And now they're altering a, a lure that a guy spends three dollars for in the store. And and they, they any success or failure they may have is dependent upon these spinner blades. You know, I mean what when you stop and think about it, it's so foolish. Mm -hmm. But they're on TV and they're the experts and that's that's the name of the game, you know. And they sell why, why, don't, why don't they say though the reason I caught that fish was because I put that lure right there. Right where he was, right in well, like Mr. Perry says, you can't condemn somebody who doesn't know that he doesn't know. And that's exactly what it is. When they have no idea why they caught 75 pounds of eggs, they have to come up with something. So it's got to be the spinner bait or the lure that, that uh, uh, the fish haven't seen yet. When these rapala lures came out, okay, when they first came from Sweden, uh, years ago, uh, they were very popular the 60s, right away. In the 60s. Very popular. Then uh, Minnesota mining, which was Scotch tape, got a hold of them and they bought them all. And they put them in for a real production line so they could really be spit out, you know. You don't know how many people thought that this Lori Rapala guy was making all these lures down in the basement. Hand carving. Yeah, they told me, well, this, this guy's hand carving them. I said, how many are in these stores around here? Oh, there's thousands of them. I said, how long do you think this guy can carve these things out? How many do you think he can make in a day? Don't be silly. But see, that's, a, that's the, the fisherman, if he believes that, that gives him more confidence. See, this guy carved this thing with it in his own hand. You know, and then the thing is, uh, we, we used to call it the kite. Because if you try to cast it in any kind of wind, you know, it's called this one. It's a, you know, it's, it's strictly a shallow running lure and, uh, it's a good springtime lure. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it's made what for. It that's exactly what it's made for. The pictures and everything, you know, and the kids don't laugh. Right. Well, you should have seen the look on these guys' face. You know. They hate your guts, though. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what Larry McCormick told them? Larry McCormick is a spring partner. He volunteers his time for this, too. He lives in Marion. And the Cyril Bowen said something to him. I can't believe these kids caught these fish out here. We were out here all day. And Larry McCormick says, he says, you fish out of one of these things, you know, this nitro. <laughs> We're going to catch any fish in that boat. <laughs> but, you know, you laugh about it, but there's guys there his age. And we don't want those guys to get fooled. You know? We don't want this to happen. It shouldn't be happening like this, you know. Uh, Rod Rodney, he, when he was down there at Park, he was some of them buddies. <laughs> You come in there and troll between them and the bank coming around there, wouldn't you? They come back and told Reed, we didn't catch any fish. You come to there and scare them all. Oh, yeah. Come around, come around Point. Yeah. They were there with a big 225 burger thrown to me. I come around the Point, and there they were. So I just quit going around them. And Danny Edwards was with me, and he was all back. What's wrong with him? What are you talking about? I said, he just, I think he's broken his rod in half. <laughs> Threw his rod down, got mad. And, Cranked up and, and hauled up. When we come in that night, he wouldn't talk to us. He'd say, no, no. Hmm. Well, but, uh, hey, that you know, uh, how many times has this happened to you? You catch a couple of fish, and the next thing you know, you turn around, there these guys are. Mm -hmm. Now, they might be... They, they might be on a 16-foot brake line, and they're throwing spinner baits around, but they're right in the way. 
They're right in the way. <laughs> we, were, we were over on Falls Lake fishing, and I'd located the school creek channel flowing right in against the bar, and I, the school of fish was right there. And I was catching fish on every cast. Well, Jimmy was fishing a roadbed right up the lake, and I kept looking up there and motioning to come down here. Well, directly he sees me. He comes right down and he said, what you want to put your anchor down right here and cast right there? Well, Jimmy started catching me. I laid my rod down and let him catch fish. Yeah, you ain't so, saying <laughs> Yeah. How many boats was there? Six, ten eight, ten boats. Ten back here. One fella said, one fella said, how much will you sell me that fishing spot for? <laughs> I would have sold it to him. I tell you, he was asking for it, I would give it to him. I, I told him, I said, I said, put your, put your spoon on there and throw that thing out there and let it sink to the bottom. Hop it up off the bottom, and when you do, when it goes back, you're gonna catch a fish. Well, he threw out there three or four or five times. I said, throw you, throw your rod over here towards me. So he cast his spoon over there, he had a little old light spoon. Yeah. I said, it's too light, it's falling too slow. I took a spoon out of my boat and put on his lure. I said, throw that one down there. Still ain't caught a fish. <laughs> oh, well, the reason why, he would throw it out there and let it sink, and then he'd fish it like a worm. <laughs> and, he, and they sat there for half an hour and watched him, and then they watched me ride up there. And well, if he threw over there and didn't get a bite, they went that way Sometime or they went that way. Let's take a week and I'll tell you some stories. <laughs> <laughs> Buck's got a million good ones. Oh, so man. People are like this that you try and help. He sure did. That guy asked, said, ask him how much would you take for that spot. You were driving him crazy. <laughs> you were actually driving him crazy. You know? I would have sold it to him. I'll tell you what, right I'd have sold it to him. Because he was asking for it. You know what I mean? Give me $25 when you have it. 25 between uh, 125 Between what he had caught and then what I caught and then what we caught at the same time, it was 70. 70, 70 something fish? 70 something fish yeah. we caught out of that one school. All right. And they were still there when we left. Yeah. Well, he would never know it, this other guy. He'd never know it. Well, that. no, that was the only one that was brave enough to get that close to him. Yeah. The rest of them were staying back in the shadows, kind of. And they were, okay. me and him kept looking. I mean, they were just in a circle all the way around us. And it was unbelievable. <laughs> You know, here we are. He's in his homemade boat, a yeah. little wooden boat. With, did you have your seven and a half? Seven and a half mercury. Seven and a half mercury. Oh, that, that was beautiful. <laughs> and I'm in a, a 16 foot flat bottom aluminum boat with a 25 Johnson on it. The, the two littlest look, boats on look in like, that area. Looks like what they call purse jerkers. Yeah. yeah. You know, the. Yeah. But, uh, and we're sitting in the middle, and we're surrounded by these $25,000 men. And they're sitting there watching what we're doing, and then there's one of them that asked him to buy <laughs> Boy, And then he, he's sitting there catching fish, and this is what really got him. When I drove up, he told me this is what he told me. And he sat down, I'm eating a sandwich. He sat down and starts making him a sandwich, and then I start fishing. And they're sitting over there going, what's he doing? <laughs> he's sitting there. He yeah. makes him a sandwich and starts eating the sandwich and they're sitting there chomping at the bit again. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. Tell, tell Terry about that Santee we went We were we were in high school. Went down Santee, first time I guess first time I'd ever been. <laughs> well, we went out there, we trolled down the rip rap with a little 500, didn't catch no fish. We went up in the cove, didn't catch no fish. Pouring that rain. Got the marina up there. He told him we got there, he said it's been one storm, it was Easter, he said it's been one storm after another, he said we ain't seen a fish in two weeks. So I told Bill, I said, let's go in and get something to eat and get dried out. Well, there was a little cove come up in beside the marina. So we just running the bank, coming around there, come around that little cove, you can see a little sand bar forming up from a point right there. We come around there, we caught it up. Well, we started making passes back and forth with catching two every time. White bass, and largemouth, and stripers, and crappy, all mixed together in there. Well, it wouldn't be a little bit. They can see us from the landing up there, the restaurant setting up there. Well, it'd be a little bit here. One of them, they catch a fish, I'm going to go fishing whether it's raining or not. So here comes one, then another, and another, and another. Pretty soon, they're following us everywhere we, everywhere we go. They're not catching a fish. Rodney had a bunch of 
Rusty, old spoon plug in his tackle box, and he sold enough of them to pay our trip on the way down there. They ain't caught a fish yet. Now, now one guy pulled it, got in front of him, pulled it, hold up, said, what the hell y'all fishing with? Okay, spoon plug. Something said. Run over to Randolph, come back. A little bit later, come climb here, stop us again. We've called every marina 30 miles here, nobody's got any. So we sell one, get five off. That's the right answer. That's your kind of guy. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You know? oh, man. Once, That's once he man. bought one, everybody wanted one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we're throwing the fish in the bottom of the boat. It's raining. Had this much water in the bottom of the boat. We started throwing them in the bottom of the boat. <laughs> fella comes over there wanting to buy a spoon plug. He's looking in the bottom of the boat. He says, how many of them things y'all got in here? I don't know. Well, in North Carolina, there's no limit on white bass. Mm -hmm. In South Carolina, there was. Yeah. We'd never been to South Carolina before. I said, I don't know how many of them you got. Well, y'all ain't supposed to have but 25 a piece of them things. Well, I knew we had more than that. We quit fishing right then, went in and bought two, had 104 white bass in the bottom. I didn't count bass, striped, crab, and the whole mouth, and then catch it. What's the joke down there? Big mouth, big mouth. Yeah. At Mark's out, one fella stopped down there and said, uh, you, you can't use jugs in this lake. You can't do that. Yeah, you can't do that. What are you talking about? You can't jug fish in this lake. I'm not jug fishing. That's my marker. <laughs> Stop to tell us you can't do that. <laughs> and even then, people are going to have trouble. There's a, there's a little uh, water reservoir over here in Conway. Lake uh, fish. Went over there first time and never been on the lake. Jimmy and I went over there. I said, let's go over there and just look at this little old lake. It hurts some good fish being caught out. So we went over there and we, put the, we had to rent a boat. He had his own motor, but he had to rent a boat. So we have rented us a boat and we put a little 500 on. As soon as we cracked the motor, we started trolling right there. We had gone 50 feet. Got a fish. Pretty nice fish. We made two or three more passes on that bar and we caught another fish. I said, Jimmy, let's let's go on. It's just a small lake. Let's go on and look at the lake. This bar is right down here at the dam, like 35 feet of water is the deepest water in the lake. I said, we know this bar is going to produce fish. I said, let's go ahead and look at the lake and see what makes this thing work here. See if there's any other fishing holes in this lake. If there's not, we'll come back and we'll really give this thing a good going over and see what, what all, how this thing shapes up and all. So we went on around the bank, and just, just looking and found another bar up there. I told Jimmy, I said, this, this bar should produce fish. So we give it a good going over and we caught like four or five nice fish and two over five pounds off that. So we go back down, it's like lunchtime then. I said, well, let's go back down and, and we'll fish this other bar. It had to be off the lake like 5 o'clock in the evening or something. I said, we'll go over there and we'll go back this bar out good, give it a good going over. I said, these are the only two fishing spots in this little lake. So we go down there and we'll make a straight line passes out into deeper water back and forth. Well, we're right in front of where you rent the boats and there's a lake policeman with his little cabin up there that you rent the boat. From it all. And I see him sitting over there watching. And directly he comes, gets in his boat, and starts out there. And I told Jimmy, I said, Here he comes. He comes out there and he pulls up the side. He says, What are y'all doing? I said, We're, we're, we're fishing. He says, Well, y'all are trolling way too fast. He said, the only people that have caught any fish have been trolling out in the middle of the lake real slow. And it so happened at the time we had 700 on. Mm -hmm. We'd reeled in when he come pulling up. And Jimmy had a chartreuse one on. And uh, I says, is that is that right? And I said, well, Jimmy, maybe we better throw these fish back we got. Better throw them back in. He said, y'all got some fish? And he just about got out of his boat into ours to get up and look in the cooler. <laughs> Open that thing up, two five-pounders laying in there, a couple more fish, two and a half, three-pound fish laying in there. He says, well, at least I can see that y'all fishing the right color lure. <laughs> Had that chartreuse on yeah. <laughs> And I says, which color is that? He said, that one right up there. 
And I said, well, we caught a couple on a black and on a copper and on a white. And I just wondered which one, which color was the right color, you know. But from that day on, any time I went over there, when we pulled up, he said, boys, y'all gonna see some fish today. So he trained. Uh, I told Jimmy, I said, well, let's go to Lake Fisher. That's a small lake. It's a really easy lake to fish, and it, it'd be a good lake for you to kind of start out on, where you can kind of see what's going on on here. So we went up to that upper bar, and I put place markers, and we mapped the whole thing out, and we didn't catch a fish. And this we spent a lot of time with Jimmy. And it was like lunch time that we did all this. And I told Jimmy, I said, all right, we're going to go over yonder under the shade tree. We'll come up over there on the bank. We're going to eat our lunch and we're going to come back out here. And you're going to run the boat. You're going to do the same thing I just did. You saw me do it. And of course, we picked up the markers. I said, you place the markers. You make the trolling path. You pick out the shoreline side. So he did that. And this, this bar is going out here pretty straight. And then on each side, it had a finger run off each side of it. And this finger over here was a rock pile. This one over here was longer and more generally tapered, yeah. and it was mud. But way off on the end of it out here, there's a car spot out there too that would produce fish. So, so Jimmy was making a pass in there, and I had like a 100 on getting out toward the end of this finger. And he gets in too close, and that thing really walking up them rocks hard. And I told Jimmy, I said, just slow down and let it walk right on up. And when it come across the crown of that thing, it started down. I could feel it start walking easier and easier and easier coming down. Fish hit that thing. Brought him in. Seven pound bass. And I said, Jimmy, you caught that fish. You put my lure in position. That's right. And Jimmy said, that was the day. He said, you know, I can do this. And he hadn't looked back since. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, it's, it's the idea of teaching. You, know, you have to teach me. You know, it's a... Um, you learn to a certain extent, like when we learned to do this stuff years ago, Rick Rock and Rick Don Nichols and Johnny Boyle, we didn't have any depth players. Uh, it left a lot to the imagination, you can imagine. But all we had to do, uh, all we had for the map and everything was to feel as a lure. Okay? So, um, we had an anchor rope with a knot tied every three feet, so we knew how much uh, water was off the end of the bar, a, mar a couple of bottle markers, <coughs> put weights on them, and the lures. And when you learn like that, you're always conscious of where the lure is. You don't care where the boat is or what the depth finder says. If the lure is walking, you see where it's at. The depth finder helps you anticipate a little bit. But you have to teach people that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you have to teach them this. It isn't the spoon plug catching the fish. The spoon plug just happens to be a tool that you're the guy putting it in the right place. The mapping and interpretation, the understanding of what this stuff is all about, knowing something about the fish, where to expect to catch them, and then put the right tool down there, whether it's a jump spoon or boom plug, whatever it may be, whatever you got to do to catch them at that particular time. And uh, that's the key to the thing. But you have to have people either in your club, or you have to have them in the classroom, and you have to have, have them out in the water. It's the only way you can teach them. It's a, it can't be done. It's like you get amongst it. You're not going to realize everything's going to work. That's right. And then if you travel around the country and you fish a deep clear weedy lakes, and then just the weedy lakes with good water color, and then you come down here and you fish Lake Hickory or Santee Cooper, and then you go out to California, and then you come to Florida with the shallow stuff with the slots and everything and the muck lines. And, you know what I mean? Once you see this stuff, everything begins to clear up. Everything. The wheels are turning all the time, you know? And uh, he mentioned the thing with Rick and I back in the late 60s about the muck line. And we went out to Orange Lake, Florida, and we were looking for some structure. There was nothing. There was a grass lot, and then it was seven, eight, nine feet. The thing is a half a mile across or something like that. We got out there all of a sudden, nine feet. I got a real, at that time we had the Lawrence, the main box. All of a sudden we got a wide line, then a narrow line, it was 11 feet. Then the wide line again, and I'm back in the nine. Well, that, that, that old treat bed out there was probably you no know, wider than this room. And then it ambled down the middle of the lake, and if you twist it there, all those big fish were out there in that chain by the line. That was it. And we got them right in the sanctuary. And I'll tell you what, we did get some casting 
during the year. And in the hot summertime, Dick and I had him in a triangle of fishing markers like this. And we threw everything in there to try to get some casting, and we couldn't. We'd come roaring through there seven miles an hour, with two 100s on in a short line, we'd get double headers every time. They were in the sanctuary, but they weren't chasing anything, and that, uh, the speed control made them strike. That was it. We were coming right through them, we were casting right into them, and never even had a bump. And people couldn't, couldn't get fast just couldn't get it fast enough. We couldn't maintain the depth long enough at the right speed to make those fish strike that low on the gas. Now we could in November and we could in September and you know, but we couldn't do it. In, in the good old summertime. We <laughs> couldn't do it. We had to come flying with 15, I don't know what it was. I know it was over 100. And I mean, it was like shooting fish in a barrel out there. And what was great with that creek channel, it ran like that, it would run straight with a few beds of twist, and it split and went around an island, you know. You come together again, the fish had a perfect path to the shallows to spawn, following this creek bed, you know. And they were all over in that creek bed. That's, that's like Falls Lake. I have to ask what's your favorite lake? Falls, I said. No, I said Falls is a great lake. It's a lot of good fish in the lake. I said Falls is like fishing in a bathtub. If you understand what's going on, if you leave that channel, you're sunk. Yeah, you're out of business. You're sunk. <laughs>